Hello everybody, welcome to the Impressive channel. I created a highly requested music documentary on Ashanti. Ashanti is an R&B singer, songwriter, TV film producer, businesswoman, and an actress who broke records early in her music career. Ashanti is the first female artist to have her first three singles enter top 10 on the Billboard charts at the same time. Ashanti has written multiple smash hits and she sold over 15 million records worldwide. Ashanti's music career, however, did not flourish out of thin air. She had two failed record deals before she made her big break. Her first record deal was with Jive Records and she was only 14 years old at the time. But Ashanti's talent spoke for itself. The executives at Jive Records did not know what to do with her. They wanted her to be a pop artist, but Ashanti wanted to do R&B music like her contemporaries. In the end, the deal did not work out. Ashanti got her second record deal with New Time slash Epic Records. However, that record deal fell through because the label was negligent toward Ashanti after she almost died in a car accident. Once again, Ashanti was left with no record deal, but she was very persistent. Ashanti ended up meeting with Irv Gotti, the CEO of Murder Inc. Records. Irv was a hip hop producer who was instrumental in the careers of artists like Jay-Z and DMX. Irv also discovered Ja Rule, and Ja Rule was the first major act signed to his label. Ashanti would be the next major act, but she had to prove herself before she got signed. Ashanti was the only R&B artist and the only lady at Murder, Inc. She was surrounded by roughnecks and a few thugs, but surprisingly, she fit right in. Ashanti's writing ability was first noticed by Irv Gotti's brother, Chris Gotti. She was, she was a hell of a writer, and I was sitting there saying to Irv, I said, I know it's your talents, and you put a writer with the production that you do, the producing that you do, is sky's the limit. Ashanti flexed her creative muscles and started writing and singing hooks for rappers. Ashanti's next two features would push her directly into the spotlight. What I do know is that song was supposed to be for Brandy. Brandy was supposed to do the hook on that record. And I don't know what happened, but Shanti slid right in. <laughs> Ashanti not only wrote on tracks, but she also sang demos for other artists. Jennifer Lopez was one of them. Ashanti sang a demo for J Lo's song with Ja Rule called I'm Real, which was a remix to her original song. Little did Ashanti know, her demo would be the actual song. Jennifer lip synced to Ashanti's vocals from the demo. Ashanti admitted that she was a little bit disappointed because she wanted the song for herself. But I was so mad at Irv because I was like, you know I wanted that record. <laughs> I always, ever since I saw Friday, Mary Jane, I was like, you give me that, that I want that record. Ashanti also wrote and sang the Ain't It Funny remix for Jennifer Lopez. Once again, Jennifer lip synced to her vocals. And people don't realize a lot of your writing credits. Yeah, it's funny. I was at Billboard the other day and I was being interviewed and he talked about the three records in the top 10. And I said, well, actually it was four because wow. I wrote Ain't It Funny for J-Lo. Mm -hmm. right. I didn't get my credit. But I wrote it. Why wouldn't they give you your writing credit, though? Because I was new. Wow. Ain't it funny? I was, was I even signed yet? I don't even think I was signed yet when I wrote Ain't it funny. Yeah. And people would still do that today. Oh, if 100%. Signed, give somebody a song just to, you know, get it Absolutely. going. Absolutely. Irv Gotti tried to pressure Ashanti to give up another record to Jennifer, but Ashanti put her foot down. The record was called Rescues. 
Rescue, which was on my first album. Okay. Um, CEO of my label was trying to make me give it to J Lo, and we wow. had like a fight because I was like, no, I already gave a record that I loved to J Lo. Mm -hmm. The song Rescue was secured for Ashanti's debut album, but it wasn't the song that would become Ashanti's breakout hit. Her song Foolish was the single that would catapult her to superstar status. And you had a um, song that Jay-Z was supposed to be on. Jay was supposed to be on Foolish. Mm -hmm. It's crazy. That would have been a <clears throat> whole different song. Yeah. Irv made the call to Jay, like, yo, I need you to come and get on this record. He said he played it for Jay. Jay loved the record. He was on his way to the studio. Mm -hmm. But Irv changed his mind, and he was like, you know what? That's typical. I'm not going to do the typical R&B record and get the big rapper to co-sign it. He said, I'm going to make her write a little verse. And I was like, I don't have any more to say. Like, I'm done. <laughs> I wrote the verses. I wrote the hook. I'm done. And he forced me to go in there and write the bridge. See, when I get the strength to leave, you always tell me that you need me. And then I wrote the bridge. And he called Jay and said, nah, never mind. Little did Ashanti know, her song Foolish would help break a major record. Ashanti was the first female artist to have her first three chart entries be on the top 10 Billboard charts at the same time. Her hit songs were What's Love with Fat Joe, Always on Time with Ja Rule, and Foolish. After witnessing her rapid success, Irv Gotti quickly signed her. Ashanti became unstoppable. In 2002, she released more hits. also supposed to be featured on another hit, which was Eve's song, Gangster Lovin', but she turned it down and Alicia Keys sang on it instead. Like, is there any other song that got away for you? Eve and Alicia Keys, I just wanna rock. When you heard it on the radio, <laughs> when you started hearing it on the radio, were you like, oh. damn. Oh. <laughs> Ashanti had nothing to sweat about. Her debut album sold 503,000 copies in the first week, and it's still the fastest selling debut album by any woman in music history. The album sold 3 million copies that year and over 6 million records worldwide. However, Ashanti's astounding success did not keep her from facing criticism. People often criticize her performance ability, saying she couldn't sing and she had no stage presence. Some claim the only reason she was popular was because she filled a void that Aaliyah left when she passed away. Others claim that she was a watered down version of Mary J. Blige. When Ashanti was chosen to be honored as Entertainer of the Year at the Lady of Soul Awards, there was a huge outrage because people felt like she didn't deserve that type of recognition so early in her career. 28,000 people petitioned for her to be stripped of the award but singer Patti LaBelle personally came out to support Ashanti in the midst of the backlash. She is, and I'm so honored. I got on the plane this morning to come here from Philadelphia because it's worth it, because we have to support our babies. And as far as I'm concerned, she's a baby. Ashanti went on to win more awards, including two American Music Awards, eight Billboard Music Awards, and a Grammy. She also performed at the 2003 Grammys. Ashanti was riding high off of her success. She was America's new sweetheart, and she was crowned the princess of hip hop and R&B. Ashanti had a polished image, but she also had a street edge. Being affiliated with Murder, Inc. helped with that. The CEO of Murder, Inc. Records, Irv Gotti, wanted his label to have a street-like image. The artists at Murder, Inc. were marketed as the mob family of music. Instead of putting out hits on people, they were creating music hits for the people. 
Ja Rule and Ashanti were the two top artists on the label, and they were killing it the most. Irv Gotti was running a well-oiled machine. However, his dynasty would be threatened. His biggest artist, Ja Rule, got into a very public beef with upcoming rapper 50 Cent. Their feud started in the streets, but turned into a one-on-one -on -one rap beef. You personally, the murder ain't the people that you see, like Irv, Ja, are bitches. Like, these niggas don't got no hood in them. 50 Cent tried to gain clout by dissing Ja Rule, and it ended up leading to physical altercations between 50 Cent and Murder Inc.'s camp. One of Murder Inc.'s associates, Black Child, stabbed 50. The beef escalated from there. 50 Cent and his music crew, G Unit, took more jabs at Murder Inc. They also got their label mates, including Eminem, Dr. Dre, Opie Trice, and others, to side with them. 50's increasing influence in the music industry caused other rappers and music listeners to turn their interest away from Murder, Inc. This did affect Ashanti because she too became a target. 50 Cent and his artist Lloyd Banks took shots at her appearance by calling her hairy and mocking her sideburns. Obviously the beef with 50 and Ja, it was, it was a lot. Me and Ja were the most successful ones on the record label. It was a whole lot of darts being thrown. Around this time, Murder, Inc. was in deeper trouble. They were under federal investigation for having business ties to the notorious drug kingpin, Supreme. Murder, Inc.'s affiliation with Supreme is said to be the root of the tension between 50 Cent and Murder, Inc. Supreme was an enemy of 50 Cent. Therefore, anybody connected to Supreme was an enemy of his too. In the midst of all the crazy drama, Ashanti had her second album to release. Fabulous featured Ashanti on his song, Into You, and he wanted Ashanti to be a part of the commercial release. However, Irv Gotti stopped that from happening. <laughs> I'm so into you. There's a Tamiya oh, okay. version and Ashanti. Please, can you please explain the, the mix up or the... So we got Ashanti. So Ashanti did the song. Young Ashanti. Then when we was going to do the video, we couldn't get a Shanti for the video. It was taking. <laughs> oh, shit. I think Irv might have been. Irv, Irv might have been pulling ass. some funny moves back then. Now, now, That's cool. I think Irv did some funny business. I gotta ask Irv what happened about that. Now, I saw Fabulous on the Rap Radar podcast. He said that you were on the original version of uh, So Into You? Yeah. But then he said Irv blocked it, maybe? Herb had said something like, you know, both of us made the decision to not be on it or whatever, whatever. And I was just like, at that time, I wasn't calling the shots. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm yeah. saying? So I was like, I want to be a part of whatever I'm on. You know, I want to be in video. Fabulous ended up reworking the single with the original singer of the song, Tamia. The version with Tamia peaked to number four on the Billboard charts. Even though Ashanti's version did get a lot of radio play, she missed out on the big hit that Tamiya's version was. In the summer of 2003, Ashanti released her album, Chapter 2, and dropped her new single, Rock With You. Around this time, Ashanti had new competition. Beyonce was making her rise as a solo artist with her popular single, Crazy In Love. They both performed at the BET Awards in 2003, but Beyonce captivated the audience that night. Ashanti started getting many comparisons to her new music rival, to the point that New York Times did a write-up comparing the two. Ashanti wasn't shaken by it though. The negativity surrounding her label was more of her concern, and it had an effect on her album sales. Her single, Rock With You, still managed to peak to number two on the Billboard charts, and her new album raked at number one on the Billboard 200 charts. Chapter two went platinum within a month's time, and it sold three million copies worldwide. Ashanti released her next single, Rain On Me. Rain on me. The song touched on a deeper subject matter about domestic violence, and it helped raise awareness to the public. It is probably her most important song to date. Ashanti's 
next single was Make Up to Break Up. Ashanti's third single took a while to be released because of the issues at Murder Inc. Murder Inc.'s power and influence was beginning to crumble. 50 Cent made the whole industry turn on Murder Inc. Ja Rule attempted to respond and defend the Murder Inc. empire, but he couldn't say too much because the feds were watching. Irv Gotti and his brother Chris were still under investigation. On top of that, Murder Inc.'s ties with Def Jam were in jeopardy. The executives at Def Jam viewed Murder Inc. as a liability and they wanted to drop the label. Ashanti was affected by all of this. Ashanti lost several major endorsements and opportunities because of the investigation and the beef. You know, there were yeah. so many huge partnerships that were like on the come up right around that time. And everyone is like, we love you, but we're going to have to can't do this right now. Yeah, exactly. We're going to have to yeah, wait yeah, until yeah. this sounds. You know, you become guilty by association. Mm. I was like, well, I've got nothing to do with this. Right. Why, why is all of these sponsors pulling out of my sh You know what I'm saying? Like, it was it was a lot. Those are the politics of the game people never see, though. Because in people's mind, they're just like, oh, Ashanti just fell off. But they, right. don't, they don't see the politics of, Hello? no, you lost sponsors. <laughs> people pulled out. You might have had yeah. TV gigs on the table, movies. Who knows? You have no idea. The issues and changes within her label delayed the release of her new music. She did release a Christmas album, which did fairly okay. Ashanti collaborated with Murder Inc.'s new artist, Lloyd, and with the rapper, Sean. She also collaborated with Ja Rule and R. Kelly on the woeful tune, Wonderful. In late 2004, Ashanti finally released her third album, Concrete Rose, and it spawned two singles. Only You was the only single on the album that was promoted. Her album, Concrete Rose, managed to sell over 1 million copies, which showed that Ashanti was still in demand. However, the issues at Murder, Inc. hung like a dark cloud over her head. Around this time, Murder, Inc. was forced out of Def Jam offices. And in early 2005, her boss, Irv Gotti, and his brother, Chris, went on trial and were indicted for money laundering. Ashanti really wanted to release another song that would have been a potential hit. never happened. Because of the legal and financial troubles, the label couldn't fund or promote anything else from her album, and Def Jam refused to help Ashanti. In order to fulfill her contract and leave the label, Ashanti created a remix compilation album called Collectibles by Ashanti. Her project was hardly promoted or funded, but she did release a single from it. Don't know what is a girl to do if she's still on it, yeah. After this, Ashanti took a break from music and moved on to acting. She already had prior acting experience on shows like Sabrina the Teenage Witch and Buffy the Vampire Slayer, but she took her acting chops to the big screen. She starred in movies like Coach Carter, John Tucker Must Die, and Resident Evil Extinction. She also played Dorothy in the TV movie The Muppets Wizard of Oz. Around this time, Ashanti was also dating rapper Nelly. Ashanti didn't speak about her relationship, but it was obvious to the public that they were together. So let's let's talk about the type of girl you like. Oh, word. <laughs> let's talk about that. We'd be like, why won't he just claim Ashanti already, yeah. man? That did poor ever, girl. Did she ever claim me? Yes. Word. Are you gonna kind of vent about that relationship on there? Who said we had a relationship? Oh, it was reported. <laughs> oh my God. Hey. Her relationship with Nelly, however, did ruffle Herb Gotti's feathers. Apparently, Irv and Ashanti had a relationship that went beyond just business. Like I that, think, I think everyone knows at this point we had a relationship. Nelly's my no, man. No, but at the time, at the at time, the time yeah, there was some yeah. crunch. It was some crunch. Why? Because we was with the same chick. Were you and Irv really lovers? <laughs> <laughs> Absolutely not. 
Nelly tried to use Ashanti's image in his over and over music video to represent his girlfriend, but Irv was completely against it. Nelly had to settle with using Sierra's picture instead. They, they was in a video. It was that country video. I think he put Sierra in it. Mm -hmm. But at first it was Ashanti in it. So okay. he, he had called me because, you know, she's my artist. And I was like, remove her from that fucking video, dog. You understand? Mm -hmm. It could have been salty. I could have been salty. I, I could admit it now. I could have been like, yo, you got in the video? Nah, get that shit out of here. She murdered Hank, nigga. Mm -hmm. Irv was overprotective of Ashanti, and he kept her excluded from artists and producers who tried to work with her. This actually hurt Ashanti's reputation in the industry. The people who never met her assumed that she was a diva. When Keisha Cole tried to reach out to work with Ashanti, Irv shut her down without Ashanti's knowledge. Now, there was a period of time when they said you and Keisha Cole didn't get along, but then y'all did something together. Mm -hmm. She had reached out to Irv to do a record together with me, like a full album, mm -hmm. and I never knew about it. And I don't know what Irv said to her, but it was something to the extent of, You no. ain't on her level. <laughs> Knock it off, Keisha. That's what you told me. I mean, <laughs> look, I don't, I don't know what was said, but she took it away. You know what I mean? And I was like, damn, that's messed up because I never even knew. Right. You know what I mean? So, and that happened a lot. Like, as I, in 2008, as I started working with different producers like Jermaine Dupri, Pharrell, Polo, a lot of different people from different areas, everybody was like, yo, we, we didn't know you were this cool because the perception was very different. Years later, Keisha and Ashanti did collaborate together on Keisha's song, Woman to Woman, but it was one of the several music relationships that Ashanti had to go out of her way to repair. This is partly why Ashanti had issues with Irv. Another reason was control problems. They weren't seeing eye to eye anymore and their close music relationship turned to just a business relationship. Despite their differences, Ashanti still stayed with Murder Inc. records. Once Irv Gotti was acquitted of his charges, he moved Murder Inc. from Def Jam to Universal Records. He had new plans for Murder Inc., but Ashanti had her own plans. Ashanti took the reins when it came to creating her music. She recruited new producers and took creative control over her sound. In 2008, Ashanti released her fourth album, The Declaration, and it spawned three singles. Ashanti's Declaration album received positive feedback, but the sales were disappointing. The album sold a few thousand shy of 300,000 copies. After releasing her album, Ashanti collaborated with several major female artists on a song that raised money to fight cancer. Ashanti returned to acting and made her debut on the Broadway stage as Dorothy in The Wiz. Broadway, Ashanti returned to music. She felt a growing discontentment with Murder, Inc. Once she fulfilled her contract, she made the decision not to re-sign with the label. Murder, Inc. was at a low point. Over the years, Ashanti lost popularity and sponsors because of the negativity surrounding her label. On top of that, she didn't have the best relationship with her boss. Irv was upset that she wanted to break free from the label, but he reluctantly complied. After this happened, Irv claimed that Ashanti wasn't loyal. I mean, she felt Murder, Inc. was hurting her or damaging her career. And she, she was growing and she moved on. And why did you leave Murder, Inc.? What was the reason for leaving Murder, Inc. at the time? Well, to be honest, it's not like I left. Murder, Inc. dissolved. When, when, when I fell upon hard times and they raided my offices mm -hmm. and my life got turned upside down, certain people bailed. So Ashanti was one of the people that bit. Hell. I rolled till the wheels fell off, the car caved in, the windshield blew out. I rolled out the whole time. 
I went to the trial. I was in Canada shooting a film, and it specifically stated in my contract, I cannot leave. I came to the trial three, four times. For him to say, oh, she's not loyal and she didn't want to throw up the ends, that's not true at all. Once the industry heard Ashanti was a free agent, several record labels wanted to sign her. But Ashanti was turned off by the offers. And I had offers from seven majors, and I walked away from each and every one of them. And I just was not interested in a 360 deal. The labels, they take their percentages, you know what I mean? So I feel like if I'm going to do the work, why do I owe you a percentage? Ashanti knew that signing a 360 deal would give the label power to strip her of her earnings and her ownership. She made the risky decision to go independent instead. She started up her own label called Written Entertainment. In late 2011, Ashanti released a promotional single called The Woman You Love. Trying to see, trying to find, trying to be the woman you love. With everything I got, it opened up the window. Never should have took place. I gave you my heart to betray the number. I should have left you. just a teaser for her fans, but it sparked the public's interest. Ashanti increased her visibility by touring with renowned musician David Foster. Said I will Additionally, Ashanti starred in Lifetime's TV series, Army Wives, and Lifetime's TV movie, Christmas in the City. In 2013, she released another song, Never Should Have. This song was the first single from her fifth album, Braveheart. Ashanti released two other singles. Braveheart was very personal for Ashanti. Majority of the album was about her on and off relationship with Nelly. Her songs like Scars and Runaway detailed their roller coaster romance. It was alleged that Nelly cheated throughout the relationship and he cheated with a woman named Tay Heckert. Ashanti allegedly stepped out during the relationship as well. With was was saying that you were cheating on him. Yeah, a man can't a man can't never just say, well, it just didn't work out between us. Yeah. All I could have been, what she do? Yeah. We both definitely made mistakes in a lot of things. Um, it was, you know, it was both people. They did try to come back together and work things out, but Ashanti left after Nelly betrayed her again. Ashanti and Nelly were together for nine long years. Yeah! Because I've been betrayed before. More than once, more than twice publicly at that. So I just want to make things very clear. But there was a positive thing that came out of their relationship. Nelly forced 50 Cent to apologize to Ashanti for dissing her back in the day. Have you and 50 ever run into each other after all that? <laughs> yes, we have a few times. <laughs> Nelly made 50 apologize to me in front of the entire audience. <laughs> he said, Ashanti, I'm sorry. I'm sorry, Ashanti, all right? I'm sorry. <laughs> Ashanti didn't miss a beat with her career. She established partnerships with different companies, sang on different movie soundtracks, produced a movie called Mothers and Daughters, and starred in the movie Stuck. Ashanti currently tours. She did a joint tour with her music partner, Jaw Rule, and she plans on doing more shows. She also released a new single from her upcoming album. She has another single in the works with artist Sway Lee. Luckily, Ashanti's music story is not a dismal one. Even though she faced several ups and downs in the music industry, 
and had to deal with harsh criticism about her relevancy and talent, she always managed to stay optimistic and prove people wrong. Today, Ashanti owns all of her recording masters and she continues to make money off of the hit songs she wrote. She's in a much better position than most artists are in today. She has ownership of her work and she has her freedom. If you want to support Ashanti's music, please visit iTunes and check out the links down below in the description box. Anyway, thank you all so much for watching this music documentary. I spent a lot of time researching, editing, and creating videos like this. And it's really disheartening sometimes when I see people take my work and re-upload it as theirs. It has happened, y'all. So I ask all of my subscribers to please like, share, and if you're not a subscriber, subscribe to this channel. Thank you all so much for watching this video, and I will see you next time. Bye!